Yo guys, welcome to the last lap. Don't forget to drop a lovely juicy five star rating if you're watching an Apple podcast or Spotify. Hope you enjoy and let's get into it. I think this F2 season this year is like building up. There's a lot of oh, potential it's names. Serious potential. Yeah, man, for sure. It's it's mad. It's completely mad because you can genuinely make a case for about 15 drivers winning a race. Yeah, which yeah. is not not unusual for 15 drivers to be in contention. But then you can make a, you can make a serious case for about 10 drivers winning the championship, mm. and that is unusual. Usually, you have a red hot favorite, and then you might get a rookie who bolts through, does something special. That's always how it's been. I I it's going to be about i think the winner of that championship is going to be the one who minimizes the bad weekends so if you don't have the pace can you finish fourth mm. in the feature yeah, can you finish yeah. fifth in the feature um and albert park that is not a simple circuit at all so levels the field for everyone mm. experience goes to, to zero say no none of them will have driven now no Seriously. data so even if you're a team in form like art have been ridiculous in yeah. qualifying suddenly mm. no data so you've got to do it on the fly I'm loving it. I'm loving the unpredictability of it. Yeah, I, I think anyone watching or listening, like if you don't follow the F2. Oh, please do. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it, it's honestly built like the, the, this F1 season, we'll get onto this F1 season because obviously it is looking like it could end up being a bit processionary. We're hoping that's not the case. Uh, might not be 10 drivers who can win the championship. <laughs> but uh, the F2 is almost guaranteed. I mean, that yeah. sprint race in Saudi was phenomenal. That's one of so the best good. races I've ever done. Yeah. Like, had the privilege of commentating on. That was, that was incredible. You're like, how can the gap still be this? It must be nice from your point of view when a race just, you know, you can, for, for that instance, right? Yeah. A race that's so good, so exciting, you're just running off instinct, I imagine. You yeah, don't yeah, have yeah, to yeah. think so much about, you know, oh, it's, it's been a bit stale. Yeah. We have to find a talking point. Yeah. You can just yeah. go with the flow for a race like the that, right? There. Yeah, absolutely. You're just, you, to be honest, those are the races. You get different tiers of races. Like sometimes you have to work really, really hard to, because, we, we have a really, really good audience, a really knowledgeable audience all the way through. I know we've got a lot of new fans, but they're picking things up so, so quickly. So a lot of the time you're trying to add to a pretty knowledgeable audience. So sometimes you might have to work really hard on it. Other times you're just, if it's a, if it's a crash fest or a dramatic one, say like Hockenheim a couple of years ago where there's just cars off and you're, you're just like, right, who's that in the wall? Who's that in the wall? Who's not got a front wing there? That's a different type of challenge. But then as you say, you get to a sprint race in, in Jeddah where you're like, I'm enjoying this like I'm on the sofa. Hmm. I'm IDing the drivers, but it, that's just pure enthusiasm. That yeah. takes you back to being a kid. And those, those are the races that, I think those are the races where you look back and you go, God, that was fantastic. Those are the ones you remember. Yeah. And obviously now, mm. switch on the uh, YouTube F1 highlights. Yep. This is a new voice that you hear uh, coming back at you. There is. There mm. is. Um, yeah, that is, a, that is a totally different audience to do it for as well. So that's a, that's a new development for this year. And again, massive privilege to be for a, a F1 TV's commentary to, to be carried there. And when you say a different audience, mm. like what is your understanding of you know, because you've worked across uh, obviously F1 TV, Channel 4. Mm. Um, we talk about F1 audience and the boom of Drive to Survive and all that. Yeah. But f in a more nuanced way, what is your understanding of, th of the breakdown of different audiences? Wh where do you see certain audiences say more than others? So the YouTube audience versus mm. the F1 TV audience versus Channel 4, for example. Yeah. Well, it's usually easiest to do on age. And we don't, we don't reflect on this massively because you're doing a doing this year, doing a commentary that goes out live, a commentary that goes out to a broad terrestrial audience on channel four, and then what is usually a 10, 12, eight minute edit for YouTube. Mm -hmm. So you're not really, you're just trying to do the best job possible, but you are aware that you've got in that audience, you might have a super fan who's watched it for 20 years. You might have someone who's left it on uh, and has heard a little bit of, about it, mm. but but is needs needs a little bit reminding of who the drivers are, other than Hamilton and Verstappen. And then you have a YouTube audience who could be anything from people who were busy on Sunday to that's how people consume it, mm. having got into Drive to Survive. So you're just trying to do the tidiest job possible, <laughs> and you're not trying to insult anyone's <coughs> intelligence, and you're trying mm. to trying to be honest. You're trying to if a move is if a move is a DRS move, you're not trying to hype it up an enormous amount. If it's a slam dunk pass you're not going to take the volume up. That's, yeah. not, that's not realistic. If, uh, if it's a thrilling, we had some great moves. If it's a thrilling move around the outside, like Lance Stroll on lap one in Jeddah, oh. you're going to give it both barrels because that was one of the moves. That will be <clears throat> top 10 move of the season, guaranteed. Yeah. 
Do you, do you think um, that the way that you've maybe had to present or like your com your commentary has kind of changed over sort of maybe the last five or six years because of the, like you said, there's there's a bit of an influx now of uh, fans coming in from yeah. Drive to Survive. There's more of like an explanatory mm. style of commentary that's required as well. Well, the, the gold standard of commentary is if you can get the explanation in without the long-term fans understanding that you smuggled the explanation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, hard yeah, yeah. bit. That's yeah. where you actually, that's, you actually earn your money, I say, looking off into the distance, thinking about doing yeah. it for a whole season. <laughs> but no, that's the... New fans is a brilliant thing. Yeah. Any sport would love to have what F1 has happened mm -hmm. to it in the, in the last couple of years. So you just have to, you probably, to answer your question, you probably have to remember no assumed knowledge mm -hmm. more than you did, say, five years ago. And yeah, you yeah. knew there was, a, there was a base standard. But, um, you know, there are sports I consume, like, once a year. For instance, I'll watch a Rugby World Cup or a Rugby Six Nations, mm -hmm. but I won't really watch it the rest of the time. And so sometimes, and and I find the commentators who do that just do a phenomenal job because they are, they'll be like, and a quick reminder, and that's for the new fans, that's for the casual fans, mm. that's for the people who just yeah. Yeah, like me once a year. Yeah. So you have to do a, yeah, a bit more of that than maybe we did five years ago. Right, yeah. yeah. yeah but, what, is, what is the kind of crossover between other sports? Like how, how often do you look at um, sports rugby, football, mm. you know, volleyball, badminton, whatever, like, yeah. uh, you know, a bit of the badminton like, like how, how much, yeah, it, do you think there is kind of quite a direct crossover or do you think, you know, certain sport, do you think F1 requires, you know, specific nuances that mm. maybe don't exist in other sports? Yeah, I think, again, spoke about the, the knowledgeable fan base. Um, that requires you to, to have an intuition for the sport in a way that, it's why 2021 was quite difficult to call at the end of the year. Yeah. Because you had a muscle memory for what race control were going to do. And then you had something totally different to the previous, say, two mm. decades of what race control were going to do. So that muscle memory of knowing, knowing the rule book almost by instinct, which is what we had last year. For example, Japan's yeah. a perfect example of it. Everyone is reacting to what the rule was meant to be rather than what the rule actually said. Yeah, yeah. Which is why you had that bizarre situation where the entire, including myself, everyone got caught out by what was going on because there'd been a slight wrinkle in the writing of the rule, which has now been changed. So crossing over from other sports, no, I think there is a lot. Formula One is, is almost unique in that there are so many rules. There are so many precedents. Mm. There are so many things set on precedent. Um, that yeah, you have to have a you have to have a lot of knowledge. If you're going to call it, you've got to have a a good feel for the the what's gone before. And this crossover, I mean, I've done plenty of sports in the past, and uh, but I think there's a it's hard to pick up if you're not knowledgeable yeah. as a yeah, broadcaster yeah, yeah. about Formula One. <clears throat> I would say to do the play by play. I think you could come at it from different. I mean, we've seen an influx of of totally different. Uh, content creators and there's a, been an explosion in podcasts and there's so many new voices doing it mm. but, for play, but for play by play as the uh, early gray hairs on the side of my head will tell you, <laughs> you you've got to be across absolutely everything as a result but yeah there's crossover from different sports but you've just got to know it inside out and that's true of any sport you've yeah. just got to know it you've got to know as much as possible and you've just got to be on top of it 